Hey guys, it's Clout, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this using the new Gaussian splatting method. This is a plugin that works in both DaVinci Resolve and After Effects, so you can follow the tutorial for either software. For my DaVinci Resolve users, I'll be providing a project file and also a Gaussian splat file, which will be the main thing that you need to recreate the scene. All right, enough time wasting. Let's get straight into it. First thing you want to do is go to aescripts.com and type in Gaussian splatting. If you're on After Effects, you can just click on the regular one and it'll give you the After Effects plugin. Uh, for DaVinci Resolve, just search up that. Now, instead of paying $50, just press try and it'll give you the file. Inside the file, you'll get something like this. If you're on Mac, then just go into the Mac OS folder, Windows, Windows folder. For DaVinci Resolve, you just want to copy this, go to this PC, program files, common files, OFX, plugins, and then you want to paste it here. Now, once you have it installed, you want to restart DaVinci Resolve, open up a Fusion composition, and in order to check that you did it, just add a node called Gaussian Splatting, and it should be right there. Now, it usually takes a couple of seconds to load in at first. That's completely normal. And if you have this red X, that's also completely normal. I'm going to show you how to remove that. So in order to get rid of the red X, we're going to need to use a clean plate node. This is pretty much the DaVinci Resolve equivalent of content aware fill, and it will just like stretch the pixels over the red X. Gaussian Spying node, I'm going to rename this to watermark. Pretty much what we have to do here is use this raw data of the watermark right here kind of as a mask press the fill button and that should be it so now when you go to your main gaussian splatting node and put in literally anything you won't have a watermark anymore so that makes life a whole lot easier and it doesn't really lag either so yeah now for the cool stuff so in order to show you the basics of how to use this, I'm going to get a test POI file and pretty much you just want to go through each tab and look at what each thing does. The first thing that might be kind of weird, especially for the new users, is the way you control the camera. Um, and there's even a camera tab down here. This is probably the hardest part to get used to. Um, since there's no real 3D space, you kind of have to eyeball it and just use the sliders to your best ability. So right now, I'm trying to get a front perspective of this little place right here and notice how I can't go down I actually have to do a whole 360 to get that view so it might be a little bit weird at first but I just say like you know be patient with it and you'll get the hang of it pretty quick but yes it can be a little bit finicky crop is pretty much cropping all the pixels that are within this little box right here you can also invert that and it will take away Ooh, now I have a hole in the floor. In the effects tab, there's color grading, basic color grading, nothing crazy there. Splat color. Anywhere inside the sphere will be colored, whatever you want. And then move this forward a little bit. And there you go, now I have white plants. Flat opacity is the opacity of all the splats here. You can change the size and the scale of it. Pretty much whatever is in this sphere is going to be affected by it. So you can make really cool transitions with this. There is displacement. And displacement just warps all the splats based on the sliders here. You can even rotate all them around and uh, using stuff like this because you can make some really cool effects with it. Next is splat scale. Splat scale is pretty much changing the scale of all the splats within the scene. And it made like a really nice effect like this. Next is noise. Noise is distort node. It distorts all the splats that are within this little sphere right here. You can change the amplitude of it, the scale of it. You can make it look really cool. You can do some really cool effects with this. Transform moves the actual model around. Instead of using a line, you should use transform. That way, if you bring in a second model in, my Beerus figurine right here, this is actually photo scan that I made at home. So now it's on top of the table. And now if I use the camera to move it around, everything is kind of together. That's how you can combine multiple models together. So you might be wondering how you're going to incorporate the Gaussian splatting effect onto your edits, especially those AMV 
editors that only work with 2D images. How could you possibly do something like this? It's not in 3D. Well, I found a solution that might be able to take every single 2D image and apply the Gaussian spiking effect on it. So here's how you achieve that. Pretty much you get a fusion composition and make sure it's at least 30 seconds long to frame 30. There you go and cut right there. All right, now it's 30 frames long. So I have my clip right here and I want it to hold on this frame. So I'm going to get my time stretcher and I'm going to make sure that it holds on this frame right here. And now I'm going to get a DVE node, right click the Y rotation, modify with anim curves. And now we'll have a spinning image. Now I get a saver node. Attach that to the DVE, go to browse, make a new folder, call it tutorial, doesn't really matter, and save it. You can save the image as whatever name you want. Then go to the fusion tab at the top, press render all savers. Now that the render is completed, I'm using jaw set post shot. What you want to do is import your footage. So go in here. There you go. It gets all the frames, all 30 frames. And now it's going to process the image. I have a RTX 4080, so it's going to take my computer a little bit. Now we have the image. If the image has a weird dimming effect on it, that's because you have the tone mapping turned on in color settings. Make sure that it's turned off. So you want to click at the top and click on image set. And if the image looks pretty much good enough, then you can go to file and export splat model and save that to the same folder that you made. And I'm going to merge that on top of the footage. And now I'm going to get the, so this PLY file is what we exported. Just put that in there and it's going to come out looking weird at first. You're going to have to zoom it out and manually change it. So it is aligned with the original image. You can go into the merge and change the blend and just slowly bring it to the center and just make it fit to scale. Now the controls are a little bit wonky. I know you will get used to it. So 2D images are a little bit finicky, but they do end up working. So the opacity that works just fine. The noise amplitude also works just fine. It's just a little bit finicky and you have to position everything. But let's say I wanted the noise amplitude effect to happen on her face and there you go it's right there and it looks really freaking weird and kind of cool so imagine you did this and add your color correction your effects your compositing you could really make some cool stuff with this and this is kind of where the creativity comes in and you could put your own art style to this so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial my name is clout if you have any questions just go to the comment section and i'll try to answer them as fast as possible and there will be more videos in the future